Here we're Jake Lawrence on K103, uh, 215 on the line with Ian Thornley from Big Rec. Welcome, Ian. First of all, Ian, I'd like to congratulations. Just found out this morning that your new album, uh, Gray Street, is number one. Yeah. That's yeah. that's that's incredible. It's a, it, it's a we've great... We've never had that before. We've never had, we've never had a, uh, a record debut at number one. I it'll come out, it'll be number one for, for a day or two. Um, but actually, I guess it has to be up there, and up and around there for an entire week, and then you you know just based on the numbers, they'll uh, determine where it, where it actually stands. And yeah, we got a we got a number one. That's gets a big well, yeah. deal around here. Yeah, absolutely, and congratulations on that. Uh, I want to. I want you to clear something up for me. We were having a discussion here at the radio station because we were talking about the interview today, and I was talking to uh, my boss about it. Uh, Big Wreck, you guys are labeled on Wikipedia here, and who knows how accurate that is as a Canadian American band. How, how does that work? Which which one are you? Oh, I'm Canadian. I'm, I'm from Toronto, I'm born and raised. Oh, okay. Um, I went to I went to college in in Boston. Uh, and that's where I met the other three members of the original lineup. Um, so it was, a, yeah, it was an American band with a Canadian singer. Right. Um, and we just seemed to we just seemed to get a little more traction in Canada than we did in the U.S. Certainly after the second record. Um, and then and then we disbanded for several years, and and, uh, and then Brian and I sort of reunited. So I mean, he's. He still is and always will be an American and, and I'll always be Canadian. The rest of the guys in the band are Canadian, so yeah, I guess that that still that still rings true. It's a Canadian American alliance, you know. Oh, okay. Then that makes sense because I noticed on your tour schedule. I mean, you're doing a lot of dates in Canada. You're going to be here. Big Rex is going to be here in March 8th in the Montreal, and but you have a few dates in New York State and Boston. You guys are fairly popular in Boston. Um, I honestly don't know. We haven't played there in a long time. Yeah. Um, it's certainly not as big wreck, uh, but it'll be it'll be interesting. I know we're going to see a lot of a lot of old friends that uh, you know, got guys that I still stay in touch with, and, and you know that I, I will still see from time to time. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you know, they're all they're people that live in Boston. It's, I have a a very fond place in my in my heart uh, for that city, in particular, and of course for New York as well. But uh, you know, having spent so much time in Boston and living there, um, it, it was always sort of a second, uh, second hometown for me. Um, and yeah, I'm really looking forward to going back and and just uh, honestly just just to see a lot of the people I haven't seen in a couple of years. But, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens with the show. Like if we get a good turnout, I, I know that the, I, I sort of get updated every now and then um, uh, as far as like where it's selling well and what's, what's selling tickets. And yeah. I usually don't pay too much attention, um, but, but I'm, I, I am kind of curious and I think it's doing okay. Um, but yeah, it'll, it'll be, it'll be an interesting night for sure. Well, no, I think people are going to love you here because around here, uh, there's a lot of Boston Bruins fans. So you got to give a shout out to them, you know, so. <laughs> so. so, okay. Um, you guys, now you guys broke up. You mentioned just a little bit earlier, in two, and then in 2010 you reformed again. And my gosh, have you guys been busy? You released Albatross Ghost, uh, this Gray Street, which just came out uh, this month, and you also did a solo album. How do you? Uh, that's a lot of work, a volume of work you guys have here now yeah. You're touring. Yeah, I I would rather be busy than not. Um, and I I just. Uh, it's not something that ever really stops for me. I never stop writing, and, and um, I never stop playing. I know music just never stops. It's an ongoing thing. It's yeah. kind of like um, it's an obsession. It's beyond that for me. So yeah. I, you know, um, if I have a, a bit of spare time, there's always there's always, I always have a stockpile of music that I can just sort of choose from and decide to work work on, and I, and I'm always adding to this stockpile of, yeah. of ideas. Um, so it's, it, it honestly doesn't feel like I've been really busy. Um, right now, it feels like I've been really busy because we've been on the road for a couple of weeks now, and yeah. like, you know, touring through through Canada in February. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> is, 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 it, it is a thing, man. <laughs> um, all of it is there's there's cold going around, and it's just been brutal. But but the shows have been fantastic. Um, and as I was saying before, I try to sneak in. Uh, I try to sneak in little cat naps wherever I can. That's something I've really taken to in the last couple of years. Is, um, just the value of a nap um, and oh, how yeah. to refresh it. And uh, you know, um, you live longer if you nap. You know that. 
Is that true? Ed? I, well, I can see that making sense. Yeah. Usually, I, even if you're pulling my leg, I'm like, yeah, I buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I, usually, I usually feel a lot better. If there's like, even if it's a short little, you know, 20, 20 minute or half hour power nap, I, I, I just sort of feel like, okay. Yeah. Even if I don't quite fall asleep, you know, um, just just being able to rest and sort of breathe and almost meditate, it's, uh, it, it is helpful and just sort of helps regenerate, you know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's a good thing. Uh, so I hope we're not waking up and having a nap now. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, um, no, no. Uh, tell me about your influences. And, and the reason I'm asking this, I know it's a common question. I was listening to your new album this morning, and I think the neighbors are banging on my door because it was too loud, but it was so good. And refreshing on some of the older songs, uh, you know, ones I played there, like Albatross and Wolves and stuff like that, which I'm familiar with. Uh, I'm hearing all kind of influences. What? Let, tell me what they are. You know, as far as your um, your guitar work, your vocals and stuff. Um, I don't know. I mean, I I guess it, there were a lot of people are saying they're hearing a lot of Queen in, in a couple of the songs with the vocal approach, um, and just that's just because I've stacked uh, so many harmonies on top of one another. Um, and of course, Queen's a huge influence. You know, Freddie Mercury in particular. I just I think he's. One of my, one of if not my favorite voice in rock and roll, um, and of course, maybe the best front man that's ever graced the stage. Absolutely. Um, just Freddie Mercury, and uh, you know, I, I just I adore him, and, um, uh, and you know, and then all, all the usual suspects, I mean, I've said it a thousand times, but you got your Led Zeppelin, you got your, uh, yeah. you know, I, I, and I tend to wear all those things kind of on my sleeve when I'm writing and putting stuff together, I, I you know, I... I let an informed listener know what I'm what I'm drawing yeah. from um, to give them a sort of uh, a starting point, and then you know we'll take it we'll take it I'll take it in a different direction from there, and we'll start doing our thing with it. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I think I've gotten to the point now where I'm not even thinking about the influences. You know, that the influences themselves can kind of just become a sort of shorthand or a vernacular or something that. You know, we you know what we should do here is do, do a kind of a queen thing here. And then, you know, yeah. I, I like the idea of maybe harmonized guitar parts at the end of uh, one good piece of me, which are, are sadly they're not really that up in the mix. But there was a total Brian May idea at the end right. of that thing. Um, that is, you know, but but it's just sort of I think that, that some of these iconic sounds and these iconic ideas, um, they, you know, I, I, they're. they're they're for everybody, you know, Absolutely. like we are, as, as many people say, you know, we're standing on the shoulders of giants, and, and uh, it's all there for me to to grab from, you know, it's, um, all it requires is, is your ears to be open and, and put in the work to be able to try and amalgamate all these things into something you can call your own. Yeah. You know? Well, exactly, and the way I look at it, you know, uh, talking to musicians like yourselves, and when, you know, you're mentioning influences, you combined all those influences with who you are and what your experience are in life and your input, and that creates something all new. So what you're doing yeah. is totally different. That's what, I mean, that's the hope, you know. I, yeah. I, I still, the, you don't even know. I mean, that's an obvious tip of the hat to sort of mid to late 70s Rolling Stones. Yeah. Um, but I, I also hear like Roxy music in there. I hear some, mm -hmm. I hear some other influences that are just, um, yeah. I, it's it's hard for me to say. Like, it, um, you know, there's the obvious ones that in any any one of us who's yeah. at least a, a moderately informed listener or or somebody who's a fan of classic rock or, or um, you know, whatever. I don't know if you'd want to classify it. You, you, yeah. you, it. It would be fairly obvious where the influences are, and, and I think um, what's not so obvious is, is where it's going from there. And I know maybe that, that that speaks to what you're what you're saying about yeah, absolutely adding my own my own experience. And I, yeah. you know, I'm sort of lyrically everything that, that I draw from is is whatever's right on the surface, and mm -hmm. then, you know, that's um, that's sort of a common theme that'll run through anything that I've done. Uh, well, yeah, and one of the, I'm, I think I'm going to end with it, and we're talking about those influences in Queen, is uh, the first song off the album, uh, The Big Wreck Out, your new one called uh, Gray Street from Big Wreck. It comes as no surprise. That one blew me away. I mean, oh, right on. that is, uh, that one and the last song on the album, these would be my, you know, if you're going to choose a new single, and you can tell yeah. Jake suggested it, All My Fears On You. 
Yeah, I, I adore that one as well. Uh, that I'm thinking, because I like to go through them uh, as a little test of working in radio, okay, which one would I pick as the next single? Yeah. And uh, it'd be one of those two. We'll probably end off the interview in a few minutes with, I think I'm going to play It Comes as No Surprise. It's just an amazing song. Tell me about now um, your instrumental, Sky Bunk Marche. I love that instrumental on there. <laughs> Where did that come from? Why? Um it was kind of it, and it was and is kind of a tongue-in-cheek thing. Okay. Uh, I, I, you know, it's, I find it difficult to hold somebody's attention. Well, it's difficult to hold my attention when I'm listening to instrumental music. You know. Yeah. Um, and it, and it, some guys do it great when you just sort of when it's fun and sort of whatever. Uh, and it, but it was it was Garth's idea. Garth Richardson, um, who produced the record with us, he he, he just kind of walked into the rehearsal one day and said, "You know, what we should do. We should do it." He's doing it through metal, and we all kind of giggled, and and he was like, "No, I'm serious." <laughs> it was one of those kind of things, and then and then my wheels started turning, and I was like, "Well, why don't I take like all these other songs that we we were working on different uh, riffs and ideas and song parts and you know all the stuff that's sort of on the cutting room floor?" Mm. Um, and I just went home that night and started. Um, figuring out a way, just sort of noodling around on the guitar and figuring out a way that I could sew these different parts together and sort of Frankenstein um, a, a bedrock that, that over the top I yeah. would just play a lot of notes, you know. Um, so yeah, it was it was essentially like that, and it really did come together very quickly uh, with the three of us, with Dave, Dave McMillan and, and Chuck Keeping yeah. and myself, just sort of batting around and okay here's what we'll do here and then we'll go there how do we do just threw together a quick arrangement started jamming over it and then you know it, it kind of tells you where, where it wants to go and you just sort of follow your nose and, and then it's like okay that's good oh, now yeah. let's yeah. try it with and before you know it you gotta you know you gotta sort of uh, I, I don't know I, I don't even know how to describe it because there's, there's people who do instrumental music and they do it yeah. that's what they do and that's their forte and you know I, they would probably giggle if they heard this, you know, I, I, that's what I would think. But I mean, I, I do stand behind it um, as far as uh, it, it being sort of a lighthearted breather from, from some of the lofty stuff that's on that record. You know, there, sure. there's a lot of heavy emotional stuff on, on it. Yeah. Um, and just for somebody to just sort of wank on a guitar for seven minutes, that's kind of, you know, sometimes that's just what the doctor ordered. You know? Well, you know what? Someone like me who loves the guitar playing and listening to guitar players, it, it, when when it comes to music, that's my that's where I go first. And I heard that one. I go, that's a fun song. Now I'd love to drive to that song. Nice. There you go. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, there's nothing wrong with that. Oh, absolutely. It's a great. Um, tell me, um, unfortunately, I'm going to try to make it to your show uh, when you come here March 8th with Big Rec uh, at the Corona Theater here in Montreal, mm -hmm. and. Um, one of the girls I work with, Susie, who just left, says, Jake, you got to see these guys. you got to see them live. It's a total experience. What, what do you guys throw into your live show that uh, resonates like that? For um, I don't know. Um, I, you know, I just, try to get, I just try to get better with every show. Yeah. You know? And I think, I think the guys, I think I can speak for the guys as well. Um, and it's something we take very seriously. And, you know, it's not... Uh, well, as you should, yeah. It's not all, you know, 20 years ago, it was it, it, it was part and parcel with the sort of rock and roll lifestyle and partying and all that. Yeah. Um, and it was just like, oh, yeah, we got to hit the stage for a couple hours. <laughs> it's, it's really, it's really not, uh, it's, you know, it's changed, it's changed drastically. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, the passion for the music, of course, has not waned whatsoever. If anything, it's grown uh, yeah. for me with, with, with age. And I think, uh, and then live, it's just, you know, t t taking better care of myself and warming up and, and taking the show seriously. And yeah. I've actually started to take vocal lessons and they're really starting to pay dividends. Like, like I said, I'm just sort of coming off having this weird sort of sinusy head cold thing. Yeah. And, and I've been able to, I didn't have to cancel any shows. I didn't even have to alter, uh, the set list. Yeah. Um, I was just sort of painting all the notes and I, I can tell you not even 10 years ago, I wouldn't have been able to do that. I would have had to cancel the show. Yeah. Um, and I think that's just because of, you know, just the, the sort of dedication to it. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I think you pour all that time and dedication into it. And then by the time you hit the stage, you're able to forget about all of it and you're able to sort of open a vein, uh, emotionally and let it all come out. And then it all comes out, um, through all the practice and hard work and everything. And it, you know, hopefully, Everything comes out uh, on the right time, at the right time, and uh, on the right notes, you know, yeah. and, and the right words. That's another thing that's getting harder for me as, as I 
as I write more music, it's, there's just so many words floating around up there. I just hope I grab the right one at the right time. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, here's the fun part of the interview as we end it off, and I like to do this a lot of interviews. Uh, just easy, fun questions, you know, nothing too serious. If you could play with any musician on stage, dead or alive, who would it be? Your ultimate fantasy here. Um, I would love to have felt what it was like to be on stage with John Bonham. I, I, I bet you that would have been quite a thing. I have a lot of those. There's a ton of people that stuff. Uh, sure, sure. I, that was just, just the, sort of the first one that springs to mind. I, mean, I love playing with uh, with hard-hitting drummers that have a great pocket, you know, okay. as Chuck does, and, and certainly Forrest did. Yeah. Um, Seku from, from the Thornley days. Just had to, These guys who um, play the drums as an instrument, not as a bunch of different things that you hit at different times. They play the whole kit as an instrument. And right. I, uh, something tells me that the air just moved in a particular way when that guy played. I mean, you can hear it on record. Oh yeah, um, I would love to. I'd love to have just been in the room. I, I don't even need to play. I just want to listen. Just sit there and watch, eh? Yeah, yeah. Well, for a guitar player, that's an interesting answer because most wouldn't wouldn't mention. Yeah, I drummer. get up. I get off. Of, I get off from of playing with drummers. I, I, yeah. Um, there's something about uh, just just grooves and and rhythms and how you can mess with them and play with them and yeah. you know. Uh, that, that that really that really sort of fascinates me. Um, guilty pleasure on or off the road doesn't matter where. Oh, guilty pleasure. Um, yeah, see, I, pizza is, is always a guilty pleasure. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Is it, like you got to you got to kind of watch your dairy when you're on the road because yeah. it can it can, it can uh, you know it, it it helps with phlegm and all that. Although you know and, and that'll. That'll make you have a bad night pretty quick. So uh -huh. I, I just, you know, and I love pizza. Like, I always say that. Like, I just look at it sometimes. You know, when it's like a restaurant or like a little diner and they have those little trays where there's a pizza, I just, I'll just look at it for a few minutes. I was like, you could wake me up out of a dead sleep and say, you know, it's like pizza. like, yes, I do. <laughs> um, but you have to have to be careful with that stuff when, yeah, yeah. when, I'm, when I'm singing every night. Because, yeah. uh, you know, tomato sauce will give you heartburn, especially if you're bouncing around in a bunk on a, on a tour bus. Yeah, no uh, doubt. Yeah, and the, and the cheese will will you know get the phlegm going in your in your vocal cords. So, yeah, I don't I don't get to eat pizzas. I mean, every once in a while, I'll sneak a slice in if I have a day off coming up. You know, but that's what the crew invariably every night. Like I've, I'm eating like chicken and salad. And the crew's always got these big, giant, beautiful pies of pizza oh. waiting for him. And I'm just like, come on, man, just give me one. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, yeah, that's a guilty pleasure. I really enjoy it. I love, the, I love that answer. A lot of guys would admit that. That's a great answer. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one you last know. question before we go. Uh, I saw a picture of you, and I think uh, it was you. Um, uh, can't remember the magazine online. Uh, you have a lot of guitars. What's your favorite? If you had to pick up yeah. one of them, if I said pick up a guitar and play, which one would be your favorite? I, I, uh, my, I have a, a new signature model with, with Sewer, and uh, I think by far, I think right now that's that's my favorite guitar. I've never played anything. That, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's all sort of designed off of my specs. I mean, they're all John Sewer's designs, of course, but mm -hmm. I, I just... I've been playing his guitars for several years, and they're probably the finest guitars on the planet. Mm -hmm. um, and 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 he's become a wonderful friend as well. Uh, and and just sort of it came up. It was like, well, why don't we do a signature model? And I was like, are you serious? It's sort of every guitar player's dream. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was just sort of we started batting around ideas. What do you want to do? Which so they oh, it took a, maybe a little over a year of. Um, of picking stuff, but now it just sort of it's it's custom fit to me. You know, it's just sort of tailored sonically. It sounds everything, everything I want out of it. It it does. Oh, nice. And it feels, of course, like like an old baseball mitt that that you know that you've worn in yourself. It it, yeah. it already feels like that. Um, yeah, and it's just yeah, it's, it's, and it looks killer. It's it's just all around. I'm so thrilled to have a signature model. Like I could just talk to you for an hour about that alone. Well, one of these days, I do bring musicians in once in a while to do that and sit there and talk guitars for an hour, you know, to love it. Oh, yeah, no, that's kind of my thing, you know. Uh, well, I, if you're in town and you're here for a few days, that's what we're going to do, and I'll bring some guys in. You guys can have the airways for an hour or two. <laughs> right on. 
All right, Ian, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. Absolutely. Uh, uh, once again, big wreck uh, w- at the um, at the Corona Theatre Montreal on March 8th, uh, putting on a fantastic show. Thank you again for taking the time. Uh, Ian, this is the one I'm going to leave you with, uh, our audience with. Uh, the first thing, it comes as no surprise. This is one of the ones that hit me so big this morning. And so we're going to leave the audience with that song. And hang on the line, I'll just uh, properly say goodbye to you in a few seconds. This is uh, Big Wreck from the new album, Grace Street. It's called It Comes as No Surprise on K103.